chair now recognizes the, the gentlelady from Florida, Ms. Kamick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I can actually answer that question. This committee is different in the sense that uh, we allowed our minority uh, party to appoint their representatives to the panel. So we'll start there. Uh, examining the ways that the federal government abuses its power when dealing with everyday citizens it sees as threatening is some of the most powerful and consequential work that a member of Congress can do. During this federal government's very first Congress, the representatives in the House began granting authorities to federal agencies. These members were well experienced in the growth and abuses of a tyrannical government. The inherent quality of all governments is to collect more power and authority. But there is an inverse relationship to the power of government and the freedom of the individual. That is why James Madison, along with other like-minded members of the House, as well as President Washington, encouraged the passage of a Bill of Rights, defined, enumerated rights that citizens of our new nation could point to when governments begin to trifle with their lives, their businesses, or their faith. They passed the Bill of Rights in the first session of the first Congress, arguably the most important action ever done by this body for the American people. Their actions were revolutionary. No government on earth has a founding document that has aged as well as ours. It is the oldest and least amended constitution in the world. And what we are charged to do on this committee is defend it against all enemies, foreign and domestic to ensure that our citizens' life, liberty, and property are protected from the warrantless abuses of federal bureaus and their agents. Today, we are calling, answering the call to investigate and ultimately stop the litany of dangerous and unconstitutional <coughs> actions. Truthfully, the list is exhausting, and I'm sure that there is far more that we can address here today, uh, or even in the two years that we have. So while Washington, Madison, and Jefferson are no longer here to help guide us in this body, uh, their spirit lives on. It is absolutely crucial that we today take up this mantle. It is the work that will be done by this committee, not as Republicans, not as Democrats, but as Americans, that is important and will live on. Mr. Williams, you just told this committee to be cute, quote, you get more flies with honey than vinegar. On your Twitter feed, you called the January 6th Select Committee uh, to publicly hammer and shame former Deputy Eternal General Jeff Clark on everything that he attempts to plead the fifth about. Is that your version of honey or vinegar? That's my version of stating when an individual has provided- No, 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 just well, honey or vinegar. I, I don't think it's, it's a binary. Okay. If you look at the all right. context so of all of my tweets- You also just told from... Representative Sanchez a few minutes ago that one of the hallmarks of good oversight is bipartisan and uh, it's designed to, quote, improve government process, end quote. You went on to say that threats are not protected speech. You yourself were extraordinarily critical of Justice Brett Kavanaugh going so far as to say publicly on your Twitter feed, and you were not shadow banned, however, but when you said this, that the FBI dropped the ball when vetting him. When there was an assassination attempt on his life, you were unusually quiet. Up to that point, you had tweeted about him 17 times. I hope you, along with our Democratic colleagues, would agree that violence in political discourse is unacceptable, and I would encourage you to do better. That's the statement, not a question. Moving on, uh, Professor Turley, the Constitution was written to limit the power of the federal government and to protect the rights of citizens, yes or no? Yes. You've written extensively about the abuses of the federal government. Would you say that these abuses occur within a variety of different agencies, yes or no? Yes. Are there not massive national security implications as a result of the extensive amount of warrantless data collection by the federal government agencies, coupled with the disastrous track record that they have of leaks and breaches, that Americans are not only being targeted domestically by the agencies, but also by bad actors and foreign actors? Well, there are massive constitutional concerns there with the collection of data. There's no question about that. But with all the breaches and leaks, Yes, it's, it's a There is a national security implication, problem. is there not? There can be. Thank you. It is publicly documented the reference of use of force capabilities within a litany of different agencies, including the Department of Education, the IRS, HHS, even the EPA. Can you detail why the capability, couple, coupled with extensive warrantless data collection efforts of these agencies, should concern everyday Americans, and why agencies like the Department of Education and the EPA are purchasing millions of dollars worth of ammunition and tactical ballistic gear? Well, I testified earlier on uh, the use of national security letters and other uh, means to get information below the 
warrant a, a level. And that covers a huge amount of, of information that the government has, has gathered. And I thought there was actually fairly bipartisan support on that, that, that Democratic and, re, and Republican members were equally concerned about the circumvention of, of warrants in that sense. I think it's a very serious problem. And it, to the credit of social media companies, they actually have pushed back on this. Mm -hmm. I mean, some, one of the things in the Twitter files that I noted was that some of that dealt with these types of efforts to get access to social media companies. But most of the time, these companies are really hamstrung. Uh, and when they get these letters, and there's a lot of them, to turn over this information, and citizens are unaware of that. And a lot of what we have that we could hold most dearly in terms of private information is now on our cell phones, it's now on the cloud. And the government has really targeted the cloud. I mean, they're going after the cloud with non-warrants. And in the previous hearing, I was really gladdened because Democrats and Republicans joined together and said, mm -hmm. this is a problem. And I think it still is a problem. I appreciate it. My time has expired. I yield.